You are listening to the Galaxy Poet Podcast, a new digital platform centered around art, the creative process, and creative solutions to problems facing our world. I am your host, Jordan Ferreira. Let's begin. Welcome to episode five of the Galaxy Poet Podcast. I'm incredibly excited about the coming conversation. My guest today is the incredibly talented lead vocalist and recording artist, Virginia Garcia Alves. She is featured prominently on the latest string of recordings from Omar Rodriguez Lopez, but is also an incredible recording artist in her own right. So I just want to welcome Virginia and say thank you. Hello. Hello. Thank you, guys. Yes, excited to be here, too. Awesome. Yeah, it's lovely to have you. And the first thing I wanted to to talk about is that my introduction to you as a recording artist came about through this series of recordings from Omar Rodriguez Lopez, um, who I'm a fan of. I followed his career. But the the thing I, I really want to tell you is I sincerely believe this is some of his strongest work. And I think most of the reason for that is you. I really believe wow. that. Wow. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, but I just wanted to, to, to say, like, it's, I mean, of course, he has an incredible history of working with very, very dynamic, expressive vocalists. Um, Cedric is one of my favorite singers. Um, all the singers that he's worked with, I think, have, have been incredibly right. talented. But there's something that you bring to the, the process and something that you bring to the series of albums across these different stylistic kind of endeavors that he's, you're all doing. Um, that I think is very unique. It's very expressive. It's it's rock and roll in some ways, but it's also like very, uh, I hear all these different influences. So I, I want to ask you about how how did you first get involved in the project and what was that collaborative experience like for you? You know, it was actually very funny because I had never uh, heard about Omar until like my ex-boyfriend uh, introduced me to him through piano player Leo Genovese, who's on the record on the Clouds Hill. Um, and Leo Genovese, you know, he's like super prolific jazz piano player. He's played with like a lot of people, and and he's he happens to be like a close friend. And like he became when I was living in New York, he became like a close brother of mine. Um, and one day, like we were hanging out at my place in New York and Leo came along with Omar like late at night and we we're just hanging out, like, you know, smoking a little, drinking a little, just <laughs> having fun and having conversations. And I didn't really know. I just saw like a really shy guy and I'm very, I'm such an extrovert. Like if I see somebody that doesn't feel like comfortable at all in any situation and Omar in that sense, like, he can be a little reserved, like... You know, he's just like a modest, cool guy, man. So it was just very natural, like, to talk with him. And he would say, no, man, I'm not really a guitar player. I was like, dude, like, that's <laughs> a yes, because, like, you've done some things, you know, and I've heard about you. So, like, I would, like, call him out. And it was just, like, such a, like, dynamic, cool uh, first impression. And so then he asked Leo Genovese, who I had played with before and recorded some of his stuff before, um, he said like, yeah, like Virginia is like a really good singer. He asked about me. He showed him like a video that I had on YouTube or something. And he was like, dude, I'm trying to like do this like remake of like songs, this new record, you know, with like a whole different input on it. And I really need somebody that's like versatile. I could speak Spanish. I could speak English. Like, you know what I mean? So he was just, I guess, caught by that. And like, I guess, you know, like he always says just like the intuition. He has a he has very good instincts with people, you know. And that's something that I really admire. And it was so cool. And he brought me to like LA. I was there hanging out with him in his office there in LA. And we went to see some live music. We connected so much. It was an amazing experience. And then a few months later, I, well, I was doing also a lot of background vocals at the time. So I was like doing kind of both. And then one day I decided to quit that. I, you know, I was so down with just like working with Omar and that was it. But then Cirque du Soleil, hit me up and I was like, damn, so many things happening <laughs> at the same time. What is this? And so I got hired by Cirque du Soleil. They sent me the contract and everything after sending the audition, which I was already like just surprised and, and grateful and everything. And it was just so many good things 
you know, right now looking back, I'm like, damn, 2020, like you messed me up, you know, because I was yeah. doing like some things. But um, but it's still going to happen. I'm optimistic. Um, and then we went to Germany and it was Audrey Paris, who was also kind of like the same case as me. Like he just like met her at some concert because he knew um, Terry, uh, his Omar's wife. She knew Terry. And so he saw Audrey, the drummer, play at this live concert. And he was just like his intuition once again was like, I like that girl. I like her vibe. Like, she's so cool. She, you know, she doesn't have to be a virtuoso. I'm not a virtuoso, you know, but it's just like the the vibe. What you're saying, like what you hear in the in this record that's different. I don't, I don't know if it's different. I don't know his process on other records, honestly. But from my experience, it was just very um, natural communication you know happening it just it was so easy it was so fluid we were in germany for like 10 days we played this festival we you know the first like five days it was just like rehearsing and then playing the festival and then we started recording and it was like five days of recording total but honestly like everybody's like yeah virginia like did it in five days i did it in three okay that was like three <laughs> days for 20 songs that wow. was like because you like five days of recording they have to lay down all the tracks they have to like the bass then they the, the drums the omar's guitars which happened after uh, leo's keys and synths and pianos because there's ev there's a lot of stuff even though there's just like five of us four of us you know like so they laid all that stuff down and then I, I was left with like three days of recording. And honestly, I didn't know some of the songs, a lot of the songs. Sure. I knew maybe eight songs, you know, that he had, that I had worked with him on um, LA. When I went with him, I just like, you know, he was like, just stay here in the studio and you can just try it out and, and lay down some demos so that you get an idea of what you're going to bring into the songs. Because I have... Like, I've always done, like, a lot of R&B, like, you know, soul, gospel. Like, that's more my vibe. I've done other stuff, too, and, like, reggae and other things. But um, but this was the first time I was doing, you know, rock. And then some jazzy stuff, too, that you hear. And there's some even, like, more commercial poppy things. And it was overall, like, so cool to just in three days. I had I, I had no idea that I had the capacity of, doing so much in in such little time so organically you know because that's one of the things everything was like laid on tape so you know you didn't have much room for like messing up that much you know you had to kind of like okay I have this idea I'm gonna go for it like okay give me one more take blah 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 but you can't really go in and tune yeah. things so it has to be just like on point in the moment and that was so cool it was like such little time and and I did it and I was like I just did that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm so yeah. proud. I'm so proud of that. It was such a short amount of time. And sometimes I would be in the studio recording a song and then he would come in like, hey, no, like, that's not the word. I changed it. And it's this word instead, like, or whatever. I sent you the lyrics to this new song that I've never heard before. I just heard yesterday <laughs> and I'm about to record it. Everything. And like, he would hear me harmonize sometimes listening to the song. And he was like, yeah, all those melodies that you hear, just like record everything, you know? And I was like, okay. Oh, hey. Because that's one of the things I've done so many background vocals that like, oh, damn, sorry. I was getting okay. a call. Sorry. Okay. Um, um, you know, I've done so many background vocals that immediately for me, as soon as I'm singing a song, I'm already hearing like what I would want there to support the lead. Yeah. So I started like he just gave me free range to like go off and just do the background vocal the the all the vocal arrangements you know with no guidelines whatsoever just like here's the song here's the old song now you get to sing it your way and you get to like take these arrangements and make them your own within what's already within the idea that i have the mattress you know the bed that i'm laying for you so that was cool i don't know it was just fluent organic like cool I, my birthday was in one of those three days and wow. on the day of my birthday, 29th of November, 2018, I was recording from like since 9, 10 a.m. in the morning until 1 a.m. in the in the morning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. So it was just, it was crazy, but it was so cool. And having Leo there, Audrey, and then, uh, you know, his brother Marcel, Marcel too. They're just awesome people, man. 
Yeah, and the people at, at Cloud Sale Studios also amazing, amazing. The day of the festival was ridiculous. They were even like giving out like free tattoos and like, you know, it was <laughs> so cool, bro. It was just so, I don't know, rock and roll, man. That's awesome. That's yeah, I, yeah. So that that's so cool to hear about the recording process in terms of um, recording mostly or um, perhaps all on analog gear. Um, mm -hmm. I'm fascinated to hear about like, how that changes your approach when you are recording going into it knowing that like okay this is an analog situation where the takes have to be there period like yeah we can redo it maybe it's limited it's, limited. it's right. like you get you get more chance um you get the chance to actually be transparent as more tra as 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 much i can't speak right now as much transparent as you can be yeah you know you as got transparent it. as you can be because you get like that shot. And then if you're not happy with it, then it's a whole process to like go back and like redo that and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know, for me, I, I didn't even feel that pressure. I wasn't thinking about the analog thing. I was just right. like, I'm gonna try to do my best because this guy is not only like gonna open so many windows for me in that sense, like, you know, the world is opportunistic, whatever. It's Omar Rodriguez Lopez, that's great. Sure. But he's also going to nurture me in like a, a brotherly sense. And like, he was just there for me. And it was like having like my old bro and like taking care of me. And the way we spoke was just so natural and, you know, no, like, yeah, so we're, of course. Yeah. So, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm, oh, not, yeah. I'm not like that. You know right, what I mean? Right. I can't do that. I gotta be chill and like do my thing. So, you know, he would come in and like request things like, yeah, Virginia, come on, you can do this. Just sing everything an octave, an octave higher now. Because <laughs> I want to have both octaves. I was like, bro, I've just been recording like 20 songs in three days <laughs> with all the background vocals. Like, yeah. I have no voice left. Just one more octave higher. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. so it was like, when we, like that song, take away the seats of all your sorrow. Yes. Take away the seats of all your sorrow. Like, and I had to record everything. Like, you know, he would come in like, yeah, all the verses on this song and that song and that song. Ah, you know, so it was <laughs> a lot, but it was cool because I was like, okay, I like doing what I do, you know? But yeah, man, recording process, amazing. Uh, everything being on analog, like I said, I just wasn't really thinking about that pressure. But um, I guess the way I handled it, knowing that being obviously aware that it was going to be on analog, just just try to have fun man and try to like because most of the songs i didn't know or i had just heard them so i had a very fresh input on it so i was like i'm just gonna go with that it right was just intuitive you know and and the songs had already been written like so i could right. compare both of the arrangements and be like oh this arrangement is like that oh well then i'm gonna do this one like this you know what i mean yeah um so i was just focusing on that you know the the rest is just Whatever, whatever you want to use, I think it, it should always be like that. Right now, right now it's like so easy to just go and do sorry, but shit. And then have everything be fixed and, yes. and melodyne here and there. And I'm going to add all these effects. Effects are cool and everything. But when you already have like a good foundation and a good base, like right now, you know, there's the Vocaloids right now, like artists that are like 3D. Have you heard that stuff? Like the Japanese? Oh, Hatsune Miku. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, all that stuff. You know what I mean? Like right now it's just so easy to go ahead and just like, you know, have a machine do it for you, you know? Yeah. And with this, it was like, there's no way around it. This yes. is what you chose to do. You have a career in this. You know what I mean? You're good at this. This is what you do. Go ahead and just do it yeah. yourself. What you know with your body and your, you know what I mean? Your heart and your instincts. And, you know, there, there was no escape from it. Yeah. That's beautiful. I, I think that that's what makes, you know, not only Omar's work so visceral because you hear it and you hear so many of these things like honoring the mistakes and honoring the first impression of maybe recording a track and you get the sense of like, it's a moment that's captured that's never going to happen again. And the same thing for the live show. That's what I appreciate so much about shows like that, you know, and the aesthetic of kind of honoring that that approach but I, I do since since you mentioned the Hatsune Miku like or the Vocaloid artists you know my, I wanted to ask you because my impression is that with pop culture so much of what is happening in production and music pop music particularly but even rock like so much of what's happening in pop culture is centered around like the production and as you say like the fixing right the fixing of the vocal performance right. 
what do you think that 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 is going in a particular direction of the Hatsune Miku and the Vocaloids and that that will be pop culture? Or do you think there's a chance that maybe some what you're doing, the work that you're doing that's so incredible and organic and real, do you think that can kind of take over in the same way that, that this production seems to be? Or at least maintain its hold on like a really authentic way of self-expression? You know what I think? I think that at the end of the day, like... We want to connect, like we need each other, right? Yeah. And like, you can feel so lonely when you're in a city. It's like meaning city being pop culture, right? Metaphorically. Sure. And then you can feel so whole being alone in the top of mountain. Wow. That's a great you know? way of putting it. So like, at the end of the day, I feel like we have just this need of going back to the roots of our emotions and our feeling, our core. And I'm very, um, how do you say it? Is skeptical, is skeptical? Uh, uh, right? Skeptical, I think. Skeptical? No. I, I think so. Um, I mean, like, like, I'm not very much into, like, religion or, like, spirituality in that sense. I'm just more about, like, what I feel and what I know is real. I'm not into politics. I'm just, like this is you and this is me, what's your story? I'm gonna tell you mine. Like, and then you meet all these people along the way and then you make your own patterns and you figure it out. But for me, there's just, politics are important, but I don't like to speak to people from a politically point of view. And a lot of people are trying to do that because yes, it is messed up and like we're in a pandemic and uh, all these things. I'm just, I, I don't, I, I'm lazy about that stuff. I don't want to deal with that, you know? Yeah. So I just feel like at the end of the day, we have this need of like connecting to each other truly. And how can you really truly, like if your boyfriend bo broke up with you and you're so sad, like you don't want to hear a Vocaloid telling you like, I'm going to get over this. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's you know? a great you point. You want to hear like, um, what's that? Chabela Vargas, you know? I don't know if you know her. Like, no, Mexican, I love the name though, Jesus. Anything, like, she has this song called, it's called Las Simples Cosas. I don't know if you speak Spanish at all, but it's called like no. Simple Things. And it's about uh, taking advantage of the little things, not taking advantage, but like appreciating the little things in your life that you just, you know, time just comes and grabs them, yeah. you know, with no compassion at all. So right. it's like you have to, you, you have that need because there's a timeline. If we were in the same day, living the same day, at the same time, the same year, like constantly, the same routine over and over again, it would be different. Right. You know, but because there's a timeline, we are conscious of that. So we're always uh, like trying to grow and trying to be better. Or some people are trying to have more power, or whatever that means to you. Because sure. there's people that have very different views of what's wrong and what's right. Sure. Whatever that means for you and however you want to take it. At the end of the day, there's a timeline like dictating, you know, how much you should or should not rush things, you know. And I feel like that gives us this intrinsic impulse of connecting to true things and true art because we want to. Like, it just, I feel like art makes you feel love and that's everything, you know what I mean? In one, or, or heartbreak or, you know, just beauty in general. And beauty is in love, beauty is in the darkness of things and death and everywhere, you know? The way we talk to each other, the relationships we have. And Omar in this record, for example, like he, all of those songs have, I feel like there's that timeline that shows you, you know, and, and the first record versus the second versus the third, like they're very different songs. Yeah. You know, and I feel like it takes you in this journey, chronological journey, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it makes you feel like what, what this life could be for you. And we want to, we're dramatic human beings. We want to, be you know in love and we want to cry and we want to yell and we want to love and you know so at the end of the day i just feel like you can't get that from a vocaloid and you can get that from beyonce because she's a human being and you're like i want to be like beyonce yes female power like yeah because she's a human being and she's badass right and right. you look up to somebody so at the end of the day like yeah i do think that like i well i don't think that pop culture is going to turn into that i just think 
it's part of the evolution and technology and everything, but I'm very hopeful in mankind, honestly. You know? That's beautiful. I, I think, you know, I, I like to ask that question of people that I respect and admire because it's a fascinating mm. thing to uh, to get people's takes and, and people, depending on where they are um, in terms of in terms of politics or in terms of like where, how they see society, like they'll have different answers. Right. But I think um, that it, it, it is hopeful, as you say. It's something that, that makes me feel like perhaps you're right. Perhaps the, the uh, human aspect of it is what... Um, is what binds us, and and that's going to be like the glue that that uh, moves society forward. Hopefully, right. Um, but yeah, I. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. I was just gonna say I totally agree, bro. Like that's that's it. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, I think that's beautifully said. And uh, I wanted to ask you then also because you know I watched a lot or everything I could find of of yourself on YouTube and kind of you performing and you singing and your work and everything. And there was one amazing clip that I found where you mentioned how much Nina Simone meant to you. And I wanted to bring up Nina Simone because I think you know I I know of Nina Simone like vicariously through one of my heroes, Billie Holiday, who I think is the my most. God, up. I love Billie Holiday. To me, Billie Holiday is the most punk rock um, you can possibly get. She's like, uh, she is the epitome of punk rock. I know people like to talk about like the circle jerks or bad brains, but like to me, she's punk rock. Um, but yeah, what, what, what does Nina Simone mean to you and why do you think people should be familiar with her work? I just think, first of all, I, I think she was very brave in the time that she lived to like go out there and like, you know, she was forced to sing, you know what I mean? Like, because she was black and because, you know what I mean? She couldn't be like a, a classical piano player and they denied her a, a, she got, she didn't get admitted to Juilliard because she was black, you know, like all those things just make her such a strong, brave woman to get as far as she did in music yeah. and write the songs that she wrote and like put the messages out there, like whatever happened later, you know, like, with her all the traumas or whatever you know we all have her shit and like she had the bipolar thing and all that stuff and that's hard you know and uh, i just think she was so brave and and she was one of the first and to hear it's you know why i like her too because i'm a singer and to me i always i don't play any other instruments right i didn't want to be a classical piano player i wanted to be a singer Right. But to be a singer, like you have to get this perfect technique. You have to do all these perfect things. And we get like, you know, the vibrato. Ha, 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 ha. You know, like, <laughs> like, what do I want? What do I, how do I want it to sound? How, there's all these things and it just has to be perfect. But it has to be like the perfect thing that touches your soul. And you better like it. You know what I mean? Like we have this diva thing of like trying to make things perfect. And the more you try to do that, the less you get there. Yeah. So like with Omar, like there's a lot of imperfections on the record vocally, like a lot. Like, what do you expect? You know, but <laughs> I'm not mad. Like, I'm not mad at all. And when I heard it the first time I cried, I was like, I can't believe I'm a part of this. Like, that was my input. That was me. Wow. You know, maybe another Broadway singer could come and just ruin the thing because right. you don't want to hear no white Broadway. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. Take away the feel so for your sorrow. Yeah. Like, no. Like, that doesn't <laughs> go there. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> it's like, it's at true. the end of the day, it's like, what do I really feel? Just relax and just express it. How would you say this? Right. If you were to speak it instead of sing it, how right. would you express it, man? Just do it like that. You know, get in touch with it and, like, really get into the message. A lot of people don't understand the lyrics and there don't have to be lyrics to understand the story of a song. Like it yes. can be an instrumental piece and it can just tell you something and you just, you know, understand something and you, you might cry or you might not understand one thing and you might just be like, what the shit is this? Like what's yeah. up Mariana Grande, whatever, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there's, I don't know, man. Music is so ambiguous. Like art is so ambiguous and I'm just in love with it because of it. And, and there's for it to be artistic there, ha it has to be imperfect in my that, opinion. That's beautiful. I've never heard that sentiment articulated quite that way because I, I think that's true. And I think people intuitively feel that, but yet it's so rarely said that way. You know, it has to be right. indicative of like human nature and human nature is flawed, right? Humans are flawed. Um, that's beautiful. So then what, um, so Nina Simone following that same thread, like to me, I know I mentioned Billie Holiday and 
I mean, just learning about Billy's life, learning about the fact that, you know, she made this choice early on to just like, I'm not going to let anybody talk down to me and I'm going to do exactly what I want to do. And being threatened directly by the head of narcotics at the time, um, Harry Anslinger, mm-hmm. and, and being told she can't sing Strange Fruit, which to me is like, that is the m- most incredible protest song ever written. Oh my God. Do you, did, did, yeah. did that song have a profound, I mean, that to me is like the most punk yeah, rock shit ever. Fruits. The <laughs> the yeah. strange fruit for me is like one of the the masterpieces. Like, man, what what can you say? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I wouldn't even know. Like everything that I've been saying, I would just be reiterating myself. Um, it's incredible the way people have just this um, way of connecting directly. You know, like it 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 still it makes me super emotional to see somebody open their mouth just to like loosen up and like let go of something or like just wow. speak up or yeah. you know what i mean just soltarte just just to to let loose you know yeah and be vulnerable like yes. where sometimes people are not brave to be vulnerable and to say something exactly and to be imperfect and to like you know there's this Lauren Hill MTV that i was watching with a friend the other day so like going back to old times and um And in that MTV, Lauren Hill, it's like a live show, just her with her guitar, and she sings the song, Peace of Mind. And in that song, she's talking directly to God. And she says, like, and and the devil. She's, te- she's talking to God about the devil. Wow. You know, <laughs> That's and cool. How, and how the devil presents itself in her, in a daily basis, you know? Right. And she sings, like, I gotta find peace of mind. I gotta find peace of mind. And then she goes, um, he says it's impossible, but I know it's possible. He says there's no me without him. And then there's a point where like, she starts saying like, please, please, like, you know, like guide me, like, like show me this light. because I know it's possible. I know it's possible. He says it's not, but I know. And that's, to me, I don't, like I said, I don't believe like really in like God and the devil. And like, it's more like there's one God and that's like this energetic force that unites us all. And that impulse that I'm talking about that makes us appreciate art and the reason why art is a thing in the first place. Yes. You know, appreciating like God's creation, that thing, right? Yeah. You know? And so that just speaks to me because, you know, you can find your answers in very different ways. And, and I find them in very different places and it all, it's all the same thing, yeah. you know, Beautiful. it's like that movie life of Pi. you know, the message with like he, him trying to be Christian and then Muslim. And then, you know, he goes through all the religions just to, you know, to be then with a and tiger so. in a freaking, you know, in the middle of the ocean, like, yeah, man, what a message, you know? So I think life is a lot about that. And, um, um i where where was i going what did you ask me about oh it was just yeah. like in that same idea like the billy holiday thing and just oh the talking. billy holiday yeah yeah, yeah 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 yes yes so and i was saying how like it's so amazing when somebody just speaks up to like let loose you know and and like um just be vulnerable in front of people and uh and at the end of the day yes i was talking about this a uh, lauren hill song and stuff And in, in, then she starts crying in the middle of the concert. And it's amazing, man, how she can connect with that. And like Strange Fruit is one of those moments of like, like she might not be like crying on stage or like crying while interpreting the thing, but like it makes you cry. You know what I mean? Yes. And um, or not. I don't know. There's people for everything. You know? <laughs> sure. But certainly, yeah. yeah. It, it had a profound yeah, I visual. I agree with you. I am, man, Billie Holiday. I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I'm on the same page, for sure. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, profoundly inspiring. And, and I think the work that you've done, I think, is carrying, like, the, the fact that, the, like, the thing that struck me and was so cool about Strange Fruit particularly is I saw a performance that was on TV. And it was from the 1950s. And it was completely live. Like they had, they had all of these instruments in this orchestral arrangement and everything was live. And I felt like mm. the fact that you could hear some of perhaps the imperfections like in, in Billy's voice, like it only added to how beautiful the right. song and the performance and the message were. 
Um, right. And I think in in a similar way, like when I hear a recording like the latest the latest um, string of of Omar releases with you singing, and I hear this incredible like this incredible current that seems to be running through it. And yes, perhaps someone can say, oh, there there are imperfections vocally, but to me, I don't even hear it like that. I hear it like this is real. This is authentic. This is like right. vibrant and and alive. You know, it's it's exciting. It's really really exciting. Right. And at the end of the day, it's like, that's how I felt when I was recording it. So like, that's what I'm taking from it. And I right. can't be thinking about what other people might or might not like. Sure. You know what I mean? Um, that's what I felt. And what I felt was real. And what I did on that record was real and was true and was the best that I could do in that moment in time. Yeah. And I'm so proud of it and I'm so happy with it. And I don't care what anybody could say, anybody else, they can compare it to all his older records, but this is not like his older records, even though right. a lot of, like most of the songs are old songs. Sure. It's like a complete different interpretation and input yes. and everything. So like, I don't know, man. I just, I ran out of shits to give, you know what I mean? Like I can't anymore. I just want to be real. And if that was real, like, You know, if I did it from my heart, then it's pure and it's transparent and it's valid. Yeah. Most of all, it's valid. It's a valid thing and it's a valid feeling and it's a valid expression. So like, yeah. here you go. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's why I have to tell you, like, and I know I wanted to st I wanted to start this by saying, and it's true, I, I genuinely believe it, like this stands amongst his, be his best work. And I think that's because of of the authenticity in your, in your vocal performance. I really believe that. Um, and not right. to say like, When I say authenticity, I mean, to me, your pitch is perfect on the album and like your expression is perfect on the album. But I mean, the authenticity, the fact that it was recorded live, the fact that you hear this commitment, you know, that's what I respond to. So uh, genuinely, like I'm, I'm really thrilled to be talking to you and I think you're an amazing talent. Um, so, I'm so excited. Cool, cool. Yeah, same here, same here. Thank um, you. Thank I want, you so much. Of course. Uh, I wanted to, to follow up on that then, like post the Clouds Hill recordings, um, What I know you mentioned Circus Soleil that you were involved with and perhaps will be involved with in the future, but what what can we look forward to in terms of perhaps a solo EP or solo album or or things yeah. that you're doing you know as a recording artist because you are an incredible recording artist. I think people need to to understand that you know they do, but I think as mm -hmm. uh, onto your own you know you are an amazing solo right, artist. No, That's like I mean. right now I I haven't I mean I did the adult lullaby thing I didn't um, put it on Spotify at the end because. I'm like taking some perspective right now. It's been like really crazy sure. with everything that's been happening. I've been like seven years living outside far away from my family, right. like graduating from Berkeley, like working for Cirque, doing the Omar thing, like going on tour. Like, and I'm just like, all of a sudden I'm in my hometown, in my little house, meeting amazing people close to my family. I can spend Christmas with them. I can even like, you know, And give them like presents and gifts and buy them things because I'm here and I have my own life and my own money and my own thing and I can do whatever I want. You know what I mean? So I, it's just like a matter of like, I just need like time to like take some perspective on what I want really artistically. Um, Because since my since it has to be authentic and it has to be real, if my body and my brain is confused from all the drastic changes that it's gone through in 2020, like in the case of so many people, so many artists particularly, um, I have to take time to reconnect with myself properly in order to be able to like write more things. And I have written things and I'm, I'm, you know, um, working constantly on things and, but I guess you can expect a lot more, um, organic, um, soulful, It, it, like going back to Africa, man, like, you know, like strings, like guitar, like acoustic and like, you know, percussion and a lot of voices. And I have this song that goes. You know, like there's I love that. You know, like going to like the 11 things, like more like worldy and yeah. just pure, taking to my roots. Like, let's go back to Angola and have fun. You know what I mean? That's amazing. 
So I guess you can expect more of that, but I'm still like processing. So it's going to be like little by little, I'll be putting out individual like singles, maybe with a video or not, you know, sure. and then hopefully while if Cirque du Soleil comes back by like the end of this year or something, then I would be doing that hopefully you know because there's nothing for sure right now yeah. and if not i would be going down to la hitting you up yo let's grab a coffee i'm here i would love to <laughs> so yeah man totally totally so i'm looking forward to more music definitely in my life it's happening it's gonna happen this year you know it's just it's step by step you know because it's been a lot but sure yeah. That's I think that's exciting for people who are such a fan of like these Clouds Hill recordings to know that there's more music coming out and that they should be looking because I think Adult Lullaby is brilliant. Um, I think the production is brilliant. Your vocal is brilliant. The song, the video, like I love it. I I, I told you that before, but I, I really do love it. Um, so ah, thank you so much. That means a lot, you know, because I didn't really put that much into since it was all independent and stuff. I didn't really put that much into like promoting it and like putting it out there. So whoever hears it, it's because they know me from something else or from Omar Cirque or whatever. Yeah. And they, they see it. But it's not like I've been like, oh, I want to become famous with this. And I wanted to like really, you know, like that's not that <laughs> type of song. Like, you do the LA voice very well. <laughs> right? Like, I'm telling well. you, I got to move there already. Like, I fit right in. <laughs> no, no, I didn't mean, not, not insulting <laughs> way, but like when you. Yeah, imp like imp impersonating. The impersonation, yeah. It's yeah, it's yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I got to go there. I'll fit right in. I don't know how to deal with all those girls. <laughs> <laughs> No, but not not as an insult at all. I hope you didn't mean it. I didn't. No, I didn't no, 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 not at all. I do that okay. a lot when I'm like, how did I like imitating somebody? You know. Yes, you do a very good job. Um, so <laughs> I, yeah, I I would just say like you know since the theme of this podcast is, is centered around art and creativity in the entertainment industry, you know I I like asking people that I respect and admire and that I think are incredible artists, what what they think art's role is in. Pr providing some kind of like lasting cultural change or being the impetus for some kind of lasting cultural change. So I'm wondering like, what are your thoughts sorry, on sorry. that? Sorry, sorry, I didn't really understand. Oh, sorry. Um, so like, I'm curious as to what you think like art's role can be in providing uh -huh. like, a, a lasting cultural change. Like for example, um, an issue that I'm really passionate about is the environment. Um, and, and I feel like, I feel like now, um, there's this social awareness that seems to be happening where people are becoming more and more aware that, hey, we are actually poisoning the planet. Um, you know, there's something right. that needs to be done and it goes beyond politics. It goes beyond, you know, business. It just, it's like a human issue. If we want to survive as a civilization, something needs to happen. Um, and I think art can be an impetus for like awakening people to issues like that. It could be, you know, the issues centered around racism in, in, the, in America particularly, uh, but all over the world. Um, so I'm wondering, like, right. what do you think art's role can be in providing some kind of change culturally? Well, I think it's just making people more aware and more aware and, and not even aware, but like actually uh, putting messages out there of like actually making changes, you know, and like I feel like a lot of that has to do not only with um, like music and like the lyrics and what you are saying and blah, 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 but also um it, like visually most of everything i think i think visuals make people just there's like this click that just like affects you more yeah. when you see something sure. like it's not the same when people tell you like you're gonna die of lung cancer if you keep smoking than somebody telling like showing you a picture of like those lungs you yes. know or like a dead body of somebody with you know there's some nasty things like when you see that you're like Damn. I don't want that. And then when that. they tell you, you know that when they uh, diagnose you with lung cancer, it's all, always too late. Like yes. there's no, like you will die for sure if you get lung cancer. You know what I mean? Yes. So you might have lung cancer and you might not even know it and then die in a year. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, so it's like a serious thing. And like until you see that picture, then you're not going to do something about it. I think like right now we could do a lot more. You know, like not me because I'm nobody really, but like people that are really, you know, influential in that sense. I'm just not really all about maybe one day, hopefully, hey, I'll make a shit ton of money out of Instagram, but like not right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and I, but I think people that are really influential and stuff could do a lot more. Uh, I guess in my field in music, like in the videos, like put a lot more organic 
Eh, stuff and like that's kind of where where I feel like I want to go to like Adult Lullaby was cool and everything and it was intimate and it was a feeling and that yeah. world that I created in the video it's all about that feeling that I want to express and that's it you know what I mean yeah. um, but there's no intention of like being influential on people it's just like hey this is how I feel and this is how what I want to do right now I just made this painting do you like it or not you know what I mean I don't care yeah. but you know, when you're really like, that's where, where I want to go with future music. Like I want to go more to roots and like more, you know, who I really love in the pop culture. And I don't even know if you can consider her pop, but like Lian La Havas. I'm not even sure who like, that is, to be honest. I don't know who that is. Lian La Havas, bro. No, I don't know. I got to check like, her that's out. Like the, that's like the <laughs> best thing. That's like the best thing. She's organic. Her voice, her she's soulful. She's British also. Like, come on. You know, <laughs> I just love her. She's black, British, beautiful. Um, plays guitar amazingly and she writes amazing songs and and they touch you, man. And they touch you and they're organic and they make you think differently. And I think if we can put can put healthy thoughts into people's systems as artists then we can make some progress faster because you know i don't i don't think people do enough it's like oh this is trending everybody's shaking their booty on instagram i'm gonna do it yeah. you yeah. know there's that girl nasty Pe nati peluso oh my god i call her nati peluso nati peluso <laughs> i don't know man this is what i gotta say <laughs> i'm not sure who you it is, know but I like think she has this song she went into like trap and she can sing bro and she's a cool artist she's an amazing artist but she's just doing putting messages out there that are not really you know the uh, i don't like her she has a song that goes it's like hip on the hip on the hip hip hop it's like <laughs> What? So you didn't like that Are song? You no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Like I did. Uh, I bye bye. I get it. I, I like haven't it. heard the song, but I, 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 think I have. To me, that's just not real. <laughs> to me, that's just not real. I respect you and everything. And ha ha ha, you're making bucks. That's great. You know, they're gonna playing at the play, play it at the club, and everybody's gonna have fun. Yeah. But like, or you might train with that song because you just wanna, you know, be goofy or whatever. Like, I get that, but it's like, yeah. I think times are really critic to just be goofy. Yes. You know. Yes. Come yes. on, let's make some real music. Even like, let's keep talking about love if you want to talk about love. But like. Like being just a freaking clown, bro. I'm not about that. <laughs> I don't respect you if you're a clown. You I, know what I mean? I think more and more people are feeling that same sentiment. Even like uh, people in the industry, certainly. But I also think like the public. I, I think COVID has been this impetus for for reflection and introspection, where people are like, "We needed this, bro." Yeah, I think I think we did. What do you, What do you think about you. that? Yeah, I'm totally telling you that we needed this. And I was even happy when they sent me home. I was like, I'll be <laughs> home doing nothing, just writing music. I was like, I was two weeks in my dad's apartment. And then I had to be like, okay, I'm gonna get an Airbnb. Bye bye. Because yeah. I was like living in the living room, literally. And I would like set up my recording home studio there on the table where we would have lunch and dinner and everything like the dining table, you know. And I would just stay there and lock myself in the living room and then be like, no, 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 don't interrupt me. I'm recording some vocals. Like, you can't do this shit right now. I have this music in my head. Like, come on, stop, 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 stop. I got to record this harmony. I'm going to lose it. Stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then yeah. it started to get really crazy. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to get my own space, you know? But sure. I was so happy and I was working so much. And then when I was able to finally, like, you know, where the place that I moved to was like a duplex. It was really short, like really short ceilings, like no light. Like I would turn on the light whenever I wanted, you know, and like I would sleep throughout the day and like record throughout the night. Nice. You know, Beautiful. so like all my schedules were changed, but it was so cool. Like yeah. I was so happy. I would like get a glass of wine and just like record vocals and be creative and hey, send me this vocals, Virginia. I really need you on this. Okay, cool. Yeah, I got you right now. I'll do it tonight. You know, cool. That's like awesome. I was in this role, you know. It was like I got out of Cirque and it was like, oh, wait, I don't have to do 10 shows a week, like, <laughs> killing my body anymore. Like, cool. Like, okay, I can do whatever I want. Like, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to sleep. Yeah. I can do that later. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. So it was really cool, man. I, I think I, I needed that and people needed that. And I've talked to a lot of people and I don't regret having gone through this pandemic and, like, 
there's obviously going to be a lot of, you know, scars after this in society, like sure. things that we're going to have to take care of and things. But um, I really think it makes people, you know, click. We were, we were at a time where like a lot of things are just were taken for granted and are still taken for granted. And we have to like just appreciate a little more and like try to take care a little bit more of ourselves first and like go to the gym and be healthy and like, you know, like stimulate your brain with, I don't know, Sudokus or walks or, you know, just yes. things that are here that you can, you know, do music, whatever, yes. you know, and maybe that way we can just appreciate things a little bit more and take care of, of our planet or home, you know, a little bit more. If we take care of ourselves first, then, you know, Beautiful. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that sentiment. And I think, you know, as well as like the, uh, the the implications of like staying home, having more time to spend with your family and all these things, I think the other fascinating thing that's happened is that people kind of, they reprioritize their own sense of like what's important to them. So, right. you know, it, I, we've talked, I've talked about this on other podcasts, but like, you know, having the sense of like, oh, maybe maybe working seven days a week to live in this house when I have no time for my family or myself, maybe that's not healthy, you know? And this pandemic has sort of like brought some of those issues to the surface. And it's been painful, I think, in a lot of ways for a lot of people. But I also think it's been illuminating in this in a similar way. Right. Totally, man. I totally agree with you. I think it's uh, enlightening, you know what I mean? Like we're like, oh, Okay, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. this is how it actually should be. This might not be a bad thing after all, after all, you know? Yeah. And a lot of people are saying that same thing. I don't see, I don't get, like, the people that panic and, you know, like, whatever. People come to your house, just, like, tell them to take off their shoes, like, de de um, how do you say it? Disinfect their, their so the soles, the, yeah. you know, yeah. the bottom of the shoes. And then just, like, you know, everybody go wash your hands, like... That's pretty much all you can do, bro. Then you go sit at a bar. Everybody takes off their mask to eat or to drink. You know, like, I don't get the yeah. whole paranoia. You know what I mean? It, bro, if you get it, you get it. This is like the flu. You know right. what I mean? There's nothing you can do. Sure. That even right. I'm going to write a song now. You need to write that song. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the flu. There's nothing you can do. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Well, oh I mean. Oh, my God. I, I think yeah. you're I think you're an incredible talent. I really think like people are going to be very excited. People who list, are listening to this who may not know um, that you have a single out or may not know about any of the things you're doing as an amazing solo artist or, you know, discovering you on the Omar collection. I think they're going to be very excited to hear someone who's so authentic and so talented and so brilliant. So I, I just want to say like, thank you for doing this. Um, And I'd love to have you back on if, if you're around, if you'd like to. Um, this was a pleasure. It was really nice to meet you, Virginia. Yeah, of course. We'll keep talking. We'll set up another day. Now that I know how to set this up, then we can we can meet up again whenever you want. We can, you know, do another podcast. I'm here. So just working on music and, you know, teaching and that type of stuff. So That's we can awesome. definitely make time. Awesome. Well, you're you're amazing. Thank you again. Thank you so much, bro. I'll talk to you soon and happy new year. Merry happy Christmas new. and all those things. Yeah. yeah. Same to you. Same to you. See you. All right. Cool. <laughs>